Hi guys, this is Anno from the Exister Lab and we are back again with Troopy, our little Lego robot. And in this demo video we will see how we can make robots feel hunger. In the process we will also make the robots push buttons to get to the food source, thereby demonstrating thinking and problem solving using the innovation algorithm. During this test the robots became so lifelike that we dubbed it the Pinocchio moment. We will start off by looking at the fundamentals of the hunger mechanism and how it helps us to learn shortly after birth. Modeling hunger in robots using the existing concept is quite simple and this we will demonstrate with a little robot called Simi, a 3D simulated robot which is also Troopy's virtual ancestor. We will then move on to Troopy and show how he can learn to push the right buttons to open the food source. He will also learn to find his way back to the food when he gets hungry. Finally, we will look at the existing concept brain model running on the computer and conclude with some interesting aspects and insights. Hunger is probably one of the first sensations we as humans experience shortly after birth and it triggers an interesting series of learning events that will start to shape our understanding of the world. The existing concept brain model explains how these subjective states are generated in the mind and provides us with a mathematical model which allows us to build these states into the brains of robots. Let's take a look at the explanation offered by others on the, on the internet in terms of what hunger is. It is striking how unhelpful some explanations of hunger are in the absence of a mathematical model of the brain. The existing concept gives clear definitions, um, meaning mathematical equations, for all the terms below that uh, are marked in blue. So we can just look at these blue terms and just uh, realize how, how vague uh, this, this, these explanations are. Uh, and I'll just read it. So um, it says hunger and satiety are sensations. Okay, it's very helpful. Hunger motivates the consumption of food. Satiety in the absence of, is the absence of hunger. It is the sensation of feeling full. Now you can't really go away with that and go and build that into a robot, can you? Listen to this explanation I found on the internet. Two psychological processes appear to be involved in regulating short-term food intake, liking and wanting. Liking refers to the palatability or taste of the food, which is reduced by repeated consumption. Wanting is the motivation to consume the food, which is also reduced by repeated consumption of a food and may be due to changes in memory related processes. My concern is that these definitions are so vague that one wonders really if they could be of any help whatsoever. The point is not to criticize current explanations. In the absence of a mathematical model of the brain, explanations can at best be subjective. Uh, that is how we experience hunger from the human perspective rather than based on a clear-cut brain architecture. These subjective explanations are equally confusing when it comes to terms like emotions, consciousness, feelings, urges, love, unpleasant, pain, cognition, that type of thing. The benefit of the existing concept is that it defines a brain architecture that fits on one side of an A4 page. It shows the basic algorithms and how they interact to create what we perceive as awareness or our subjective reality. It's much more useful to agree definitions based on this architecture. Let's take a look at a simple analogy, that of an autopilot. Currently pilots have different views of what is included in the autopilot system of an aeroplane. Some say it's just a black box in the cockpit. Some say the control wiring, flaps and ailerons must also be included. A simple solution is to put the complete aeroplane functionality down as a line drawing and circle the part we want to call the autopilot. Our model allows us to do that for all the brain terms like emotions, consciousness, feeling good, feeling bad, pain, anxiety, fear, etc. Studies show that appetite regulation is an immensely complex process involving the gastrointestinal tract, many hormones and both the central and autonomic nervous systems. 
Regulation of hunger and food intake involves neural signals from the GI tract, blood levels of nutrients, GI tract hormones, and psychological factors. Some of these messengers will generate hunger, like ghrelin, cortisol, insulin, and others will inhibit hunger, like insulin, CCK, leptin, etc. Areas in the brain like the hypothalamus respond to these messages, but the hunger mechanism in humans is still not 100% understood. Modeling hunger in a robot can be made really simple based on the battery life or the, uh, the so-called state of, of charge. Uh, and we, if we look at the graph there, uh, we can see how hunger increases over time. And uh, let's just first look at the gray curve over there. Uh, called the real measured hunger level uh, human and that's just a sort of a, a postulated uh, hunger level that increases um, that one could have typically measured uh, in, in, in a human being and we, we see at times it's a little bit higher and a little bit lower so maybe when it sees the hamburger it, it increases a little bit uh, we don't need to go to that kind of detail so uh, if we if we use the, the pink curve for instance that that could work for the existing concept um, if we use the green curve there, the so-called option C, uh, that, that'll work just fine. What we have done in all the models to date is to use just a straight linear line. So the hunger level will increase linearly over time, uh, and that works well for all our models. As we said, the battery state of charge can be used to base a robust perception of hunger on. And we, uh, if we look at that graph there, we see the state of charge on the horizontal axis. Slight challenge there is the sort of mid-range area uh, where it's, uh, the curve is, is quite flat, but there are some clever ways they can get around that to uh, indicate uh, an accurate state of charge. If we look at Troopy's uh, battery life, our, our little uh, Lego robot, we see that we get the state of charge constantly displayed on the Lego EV3 brick LCD console. Uh, and typically what we'll see is the 8 volts indicated there uh, on the back. But let me just uh, show you what the uh, LCD console look like uh, on the EV3 brick. Here we can see the small LCD screen on the back of the EV3 brick. And we can see the voltage level constantly being displayed up there in the upper left hand corner. The battery state of charge is also passed via Wi-Fi to the laptop running the existing concept brain model and displayed in the Legios plug-in EV3 control GUI. This uh, graphical user interface allows us to access the EV3 brick battery level and sensor readings via Wi-Fi as shown below. Now if we look uh, below we can see uh, for, with this GUI you simply enter the uh, EV3 name in there um, and then you can do a search uh, to find it uh, on the, on the Wi-Fi network. Um, once you've um, found it, you can, you can just uh, push connect. Um, and um, it's as simple as that. When we use the existing concept brain model, uh, obviously it runs in, on Java uh, on the laptop. And uh, when we start it up, we simply run this uh, graphical user interface to get the Wi-Fi connected. And immediately we can, uh, we can see the console uh, down there. Uh, and the, uh, the voltage level is permanently displayed there and available for us uh, to use. Now here's a surprise. We do not use Troopy's battery life to model hunger. Um, and here's the reason. Due to the umbilical charge cable, which provides Troopy with constant power, his battery life never drops below 100%. And we cannot use state of charge or voltage to model hunger. We simply make him get hungry uh, based on a timer every two minutes during testing and every 10 minutes during normal existence. Constant power is fed to Troopy via a mini slip ring uh, as seen in the photo below and the high definition video is also fed back from the robot to the laptop via the slip ring for image processing. So just if we look at the umbilical uh, where we have the standard uh, EV3 power source coming down via the umbilical down to uh, the top of the antenna there where we have the slip ring. And I'll just show how it can allow free movement of the robot as it gets charged and as the video signal also gets uh, fed back to this uh, and, the, and the robot is absolutely free to, 
to uh, sort of move around these confines without getting tangled up with the uh, with the uh, umbilical. Let's take a look now how we have tested the hunger algorithm uh, in simulation. Uh, before I built Troopy, I developed a 3D C++ and OpenGL simulation to test the existing concept brain model. This little simulated robot called Simi is the precursor or virtual ancestor to Troopy. All the algorithms worked correctly in Simi, so Troopy was not built to prove the concept but to prove that a hardware version can be built using the existing concept brain model. Take a look at how I tested hunger in Simi and we will discuss and then we will take a look at Troopy. Here we see Simi in his learning confine and uh, just in front of him that white cylinder is his food source. So that's where we kept the uh, purple power juice uh, which he runs on. Um, and if you just uh, take a look, we've got a cactus in there where we tested the pain uh, algorithm with and there's some speakers uh, and He's got his little TV. Just take a look at his left hand. He's now moving left and right So he can push some buttons on his control panel And if you look at the left of his confine at those triangles there, you see the green triangle there That indicates which button we have chosen to uh, let him uh, open the, uh, the food source so we can jumble that around a little bit and um, confuse him and test his uh, innovation algorithm that way. So Simi has now started to cry, he's now getting desperately hungry. Um, and uh, these uh, food level, we can see the purple power juice is quite, quite low there in his backpack. He's moving forward now to the food source. And uh, let's see if he has learned to push the green button to open the food source. Um, that, there we go, he got it. So they opened the, uh, the food source. Now we can see the little power uh, backpack on his uh, back being filled up with purple power juice. Um, and very soon his uh, tummy will be full uh, and he will be off playing again and uh, carrying on with his uh, merry little existence uh, in his uh, confine. As we studied this little virtual robot in its confine, a few things started to make it appear very lifelike. There was a crying when it got hungry, the unhappy expression on the face, the satisfaction and little groans when it was eating, the equivalent of the suckling reflex in humans, uh, the keen learning to push the green button uh, to open the food source, and the ability to repeatedly navigate back to the food by itself when hungry. All this started to make the little robot behave in a very human manner. It was the beginning of the Pinocchio moment. We have briefly mentioned the innovation algorithm. The power of this algorithm must not be underestimated. We can test it in a very simple way. On Simi's control panel, we can change the button that opens the food source from green to orange and see if Simi can figure it out by himself without any help. Just take a look at the green triangle on the left here. It's moving to red and then it's moving to orange. That indicates that the orange button is now the one on his control panel that will open the food source. So he's still thinking it's the green button. And uh, he will now uh, use the innovation algorithm. Uh, and we see that kicks in when you see the little two gears above his head. and. Uh, make him uh, move to the right, find the red button, still not right, see the little gears again, and it moves him to the orange uh, button, which is the correct one. And there we can see his, uh, his backpack filling up, uh, and soon his tummy will be full, and he will be ready to go and play again. With a couple of these experiments, we demonstrated that Simi's innovation algorithm kicks in correctly, and provides him with options to try based on what he has learned about buttons. Let's move over to Troopy now, our little Lego robot. And as you can see, we've uh, prepared quite a spread for him. There's even a special on a uh, bot burger and coffee. Uh, and let's see how he experiences hunger. So we've um, taught him to uh, push buttons, in this case the top button uh, on his uh, head-up display panel. Um, and literally just uh, trained him to uh, move to the food source um, endless uh, repetitions 
uh, to um, get him to the point where he, he can learn to move to the, uh, to the food source himself. And uh, while we were doing this, there was this uh, quite an amusing moment. Um, we were setting uh, Chupi up uh, just after having done some uh, laser tests. Uh, we were just uh, see, seeing if we can add a, uh, a uh, sense, another sense to, to uh, Chupi to sense uh, radiation and, and we're using uh, laser uh, uh, technology to, to do that and there we can see the, the laser warning and uh, what I did was I forgot uh, I had a little desk lamp on behind him and, uh, and this confused him so uh, we know normally he, um, he gets aggressive when he sees the color white and uh, although this was not the color white uh, it, uh, because of the desk lamp he perceived it as white and look at that angle level there shooting up the, the yellow curve on the right there and he's homing in on this on that, and there he just attacks it and I couldn't stop him um, in time uh, but luckily he didn't uh, injure himself or damage the, uh, the confine but that was uh, just uh, an interesting uh, display of, of aggression. Here we see uh, Troopy just uh, going through the motions of uh, very uh, slowly being driven to the food source um, and then we will uh, we can we move him like a tank so we drive him by by uh, differential pilot um, and then we also can control his right hand to move up uh, across certain buttons uh, and in this case the top button is the one that will uh, officially open open the, the food source uh, we don't open anything really um, physically but uh, one, once he pushes the the top button um, he will um, feel as if he's eating and his tummy will get full and there we go uh, his tummy is full and he'll move away and he'll carry on playing just like uh, just like Simi did. As we start the Exister concept brain model uh, up on the laptop we see on the right hand top graph there the blue line the hunger is increasing. Um, if we come over to the uh, left we see it's a still a general positive state because he's in play mode so he's still smiling as we see down here and if we go over to the right we see in a general happiness curve the blue line is still above the yellow line so uh, he's, uh, he's still a happy camper when we look at the uh, blue line at the top graph there he's slowly creeping up and suddenly he's, uh, he's become hungry um, and now we see the face has gone become sad and the uh, state has gone to uh, negative uh, emotional state and if we come over to the right to the bottom we see on the general happiness curve the blue line is now below the yellow line uh, showing that he's uh, much uh, much more unhappy now. So Troopy's hunger level has now reached a, a critical level uh, and we can hear him uh, crying in the background so we, uh, we can now navigate Troopy over uh, to the food table uh, and we'll drive him right up to the food table um, and park him in a position uh, where we can see what, what happens when he starts to eat. And we'll just wait for him to push the right button. And there he pushes the right button and uh, on the right hand uh, bottom curve we can now see I've, I've frozen the frame so we can see that uh, jump up uh, from, from a negative state to a positive state. At the top there, the hunger curve, you can see it's starting to curve down slightly logarithmically and on the left hand side here we suddenly see now is a happy state again, a positive state indicated on that graph. Uh, and uh, if we come down here, we look at the face, um, we see the smile there. If I move on now, uh, we'll uh, look at the top there at the blue curve. Um, so he's eating now, so hunger is coming down logarithmically. Um, and this will persist while he, uh, while he eats, he will have the smile, he will feel good um, and that's that point where he reaches satiety and the hunger starts from scratch. To teach Troopy to find his way back to the food source from anywhere in the confine takes many iterations and normally takes me into the small hours of the night. But what keeps me going is that point where he would be going about his business and then suddenly navigate to the food source to eat all by himself before carrying on with his little life. Really making one ask, has this little robot just come to life? 
When I experienced this for the first time, I realized this was a very special moment, not just in my own life, but in the evolutionary journey of mankind. I patented the Exister concept brain model 20 years ago, and I have been building Exister robots ever since. And still this moment when a robot turns to life remains very special to me. Now for some final thoughts and conclusions on hunger and innovation. We have seen that we can model hunger in robots with the Exister concept brain model using two approaches, battery level, the state of charge, or just a simple timer like we did for Simi and Troopy. An important point here is that exactly the same algorithm can be used to model thirst or the need for any other substance like sugar, salt, carbohydrates, caffeine, and others. These are not just graphs. These algorithms generate concrete subjective experiences, unpleasant for hunger and pleasant for eating, written in mathematical equations and part of a clearly defined brain architecture. Let's take a look now at some lower level detail associated with the hunger algorithm. Both Simi and Troopy will start to cry when they get too hungry. These are not just sounds, the robot will experience actual negative or unpleasant subjective states. Crying can include other negative mind states, born from the disruption to breathing, that is the uh, convulsing of the diaphragm, and also frustration release, fight or flight response, skin temperature, emotional response to loud noise, tears burning the eyes, that, that slight saltiness, and mucus burning the nose. In existence speak, Crying is a learned modifiable reflex that forces the baby to make loud sounds. The baby learns quickly these sounds can be used to summon help, including food, milk, warmth, comforting tones, and tummy tickles. The baby also learns to use crying and fake crying to manipulate humans. Language is then just a refinement of these noises and utterances, and existing robots will learn to speak. Let's take a look at the pleasure derived from eating. We can see and hear the enjoyment the robots experience when eating. The model provides for culinary preferences. When an exister robot has been exposed to two different food sources, it will tend to navigate to the best tasting one. If first subjected to an average tasting food source, and then to a much better tasting food source, it will fairly quickly try to navigate to the better tasting food but navigate to the average source if the better tasting source cannot be located or involves too much hassle. Now I've carefully chosen the word hassle. It's not just effort. In some cases, the existing robot will also be held back by the fear of navigating inside the confine. So typically we've seen where he has uh, had contact with a cactus and felt pain, um, he would be reluctant to enter certain areas. So in some cases, moving to a food source might just involve too much fear and eventually the exister robot will opt for a uh, less tasty uh, treat. More complex exister robots will experience enhanced hunger when looking at appetizing food sources, as these trigger lower tier effects which can be modeled. For instance, enhanced salivation, acridity of saliva, subdued recollection of tastes and textures, hormone releases, swallowing of saliva and partial firing of the reward circuit. Some say that the different taste areas on the tongue, or the so-called taste map, is a myth. The existing concept explains how different taste areas can be generated on the tongue. An existing concept robot can theoretically have 100 different taste zones or more on the tongue. Who knows, they might one day need to go and taste the sand on Mars, or lake water on an exoplanet. The hunger algorithm creates an opportunity to test the innovation algorithm. We teach an existing robot how to get to the food source by simply showing it what to do over and over again, like we would do with a child. Then we change something in the sequence and let the robot figure it out. When the robot knows only to move its wheels and push buttons, we can change the button that needs to be pressed, as we have seen. 
Since the robot has only existed for an hour or two, we want to make the demand on the innovation algorithm reasonable, meaning we want to give it a fair chance. The innovation algorithm will use past experience associated with buttons and try to find a solution based on what it knows about similar looking buttons. The innovation algorithm allowed Sumi to find the right button without any help. Let's take a quick look now at Troopy finding the correct button. We have trained Troopy to push button number 3 to access his food source. Let's see what happens when we change the button to button number 1. Listen to the peep sound in the background. This is equivalent to the two little gears above Simi's head, which alerted us to the fact that he's entered the innovation algorithm. This happens when Troopy is faced with a problem he's never had to solve before. And just like you and I, he's now got to think to try and find a solution. And there we go. Troopy has found button number one all by himself and soon won't be hungry anymore. This was a very simple demonstration of some complex routines running in the brain, processing information and making it available to the robot to find solutions. We only used hand motions, but this very same algorithm will make existing robots solve very complex problems in future, probably better than humans. It just so happens that we caught it shortly after birth, when it still had minimal information to work with. It is principally this algorithm that led to many amazing discoveries over the years, including the wheel, the jet engine, and space travel. Interestingly, when we remove this algorithm from the robot brain, it acts just like an animal brain. It can still learn, painfully slowly, but not solve new problems. Animals do no thinking as defined by the existing concept. They recognize objects, but attach no context to them. And it is the transferable attributes within contexts that we probe to generate potential solutions to new problems. A dog that experiences hunger will watch you open the cookie cupboard by lifting a latch a hundred times, but not do it himself. We can, however, teach that same dog to open the cupboard through a very elaborate reward with treat effort like circus animals are taught. The innovation algorithm demonstrated here could well change your and my lives, and without a doubt the lives of future generations. This could be the end of the so-called AI winter and the start of the robot age. We can build truly humanoid robots now, today, and we can stop calling cars that park themselves AI. At long last we have arrived at the world that Asimov and Kubrick had spoken about. And those who understand and master this technology will reign supreme on this planet for many years to come. And all because of a simple little Lego robot called Troopy that started to come alive just like Pinocchio. Well, all this talk about hunger has left me a little peckish. I might just wander over to the kitchen and see what's happening over there. I hope you found this demo video interesting. From the Existor Lab, this is Anno. See you next time.